Welcome to video 1D on tax rate structures. We've covered some of these concepts already, but it never hurts to reiterate them. We've learned how the rate structure can affect the different types of tax rates, such as average, marginal, and effective. Now we're going to look at how to describe the rate structures themselves. Let's start by examining the U.S. individual tax rate structure for a single taxpayer in 2019. One of the characteristics of this rate structure, as the base in this case is income, increases, so does the rate. As we go from bracket to bracket, the rate of tax increases. This is known as a progressive tax rate structure. This table should look familiar. It's the employment or FICA tax structure we used earlier to compute employment taxes. Although this is frequently the format in which this tax rate structure is presented, on this slide I have presented it in a fashion more similar to that of the income tax tables, with the base, in this case wages, on the left, and the rates for each bracket. If we look at the OASDI table, you can see that the tax rate is 6.2% for employees and employers up to the FICA cap, and then the rate is 0% after that. In this case, as the base increases, the rate decreases, making this a regressive tax rate structure. The Medicare table shows that the employee portion is progressive, while the employer portion does not change as the base increases or decreases. When that is the case, we refer to that tax rate structure as proportional, or more commonly, a flat rate tax. Now, do not confuse a flat rate tax with a flat tax or poll tax, where all taxpayers pay the same dollar amount. That is actually prohibited under the U.S. Constitution. That said, this type of structure is widely referred to as a flat tax in the media. Here's a quick summary. Okay, Mr. Krabs has taxable income of 10000 and tax-exempt income of 10000 Mrs. Puff has taxable income of 50000 and tax exempt of 30,000. If Mr. Krabs tax is $600, what would Mrs. Puff's minimum tax need to be in order for the tax rate structure to be progressive? I would start by determining what is Mr. Krabs rate of tax. Since tax exempt income is not taxable, Mr. Krabs tax rate must be 600 over 10,000 or 6%. If we apply that as a proportionate rate to Mrs. Puff, 50,000 times 6% would be $3,000. So at a $3,000, the tax rate structure is proportionate. Thus, at $3,001, it becomes progressive. Albeit only slightly progressive, but that would be the minimum amount, which is what we are looking for. Before we leave tax rate structures behind, I want to introduce a slightly different way of looking at the issue of progressivity and regressivity. Let's take a look at the California sales tax. For this purpose, I am ignoring any specific local taxes and instead focusing on the standard 7.5%. As you might expect, since the sales tax is based on consumption, the rate structure is a flat rate structure with respect to sales. As a result, if we look at Squilliam Fancy's son, he makes $200,000 a year in income. Based on the Bureau of Labor Statistics, he spends just over $39,000 on food, clothing, and shelter. And that's because we're assuming that he spends the average amount on those items in 2016, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Mr. Krabs makes half of what Squilliam makes, 100000 but consumption behavior, especially for food, clothing, and shelter, tends to be more sticky with respect to income. And so Mr. Krabs also spends the same, about $39,000, 
on food, clothing, and shelter. Plankton makes only half of what Mr. Krabs makes at 50000 but he still spends the same about 39000 on food, clothing, and shelter. And lastly, at the bottom of our list comes poor old SpongeBob at only $30,000 a year. Since SpongeBob doesn't even make $39,000, he of course can only spend $30,000, or basically everything he makes, on food, clothing, and shelter. Now, before we move on, of course, consumption of these basic necessities is not inelastic with respect to income. Squilliam probably lives in a bigger and nicer home than SpongeBob. Perhaps his diet is caviar and champagne every day. But the point is that at the basic necessity level, we would all spend the same. Okay, with that in mind, let's look at the analysis of this tax in a slightly different light. Now we can present the sales tax not as a percent of consumption, which is the base on which it's calculated, but rather as a percent of income. On this basis, sales taxes are not flat, but rather are regressive. In an even more tilted analysis, we can examine sales tax as a percent of not total income, but disposable income, which would be the amount of income left over after consuming the basic necessities. In this analysis, the sales tax is even more regressive. The point here is not whether you agree that a sales tax is a regressive tax. With respect to consumption, it's proportional. With respect to income, it has some regressive characteristics. The point is you can see that the rate structure may depend on the perspective of the data. So be sure and understand whatever evidence you are provided. Here's some data on the U.S. income tax. It's 2015, which sadly is the most current issued by the IRS. Since the date of John Stewart's video I showed you back at the start of the module, the situation has changed slightly. That video was made in the middle of the late 2000s financial crisis, and so progressivity was peaking. It's come down a little, but note that 1% of the taxpayers, the wealthiest 1% of course, pay 39% of all taxes paid. The top 25%, which is taxable income of about 100,000, pays 87% of all income taxes collected. That's about 35 million tax returns. The bottom 50%, or half of all U.S. taxpayers contribute only 2.8% of all income taxes collected. The result is a clear signal that the U.S. income tax system is progressive. Here's a chart that shows the effective rate for different income groups. This data is from 2017 and is actually a bit less progressive than 2015 as the economy continues to improve. You can see that the bottom two quintiles, or 40% of the U.S., pays a negative income tax rate. That doesn't mean that they get a refund. That's a function of how much tax was withheld or paid during the year. Almost all taxes get a refund when they file. This means that as a function of income taxes, 40% of the U.S. actually received more money back than they ever paid in. This occurs through refundable credits, such as the Earned Income Tax Credit or Child Tax Credit, or even the American Opportunities Credit. These are all covered in detail in Accounting 503. You can also note that even in a world of 39.6% marginal tax rates, even the richest were not really paying anywhere near 39.6%. Payroll taxes as a percent of income, not necessarily all from wages, show a unique pattern. It starts lower, but follows more of a flat rate ranging between 6 and 8% for most taxpayers. In the very top income brackets, two things contribute to lower rates. The first is the FICA cap, of course, but the other is that many of the wealthiest earn a large proportion of their income from sources other than wages such as capital gains, which are not subject to employment tax. By the way, this may actually make sense in some way, 
and that the richest are also less likely to need the safety net of employment taxes in retirement. This slide is an attempt to capture all taxes as a percent of income. You can see that the total U.S. taxes are progressive, which is predictable since the highly progressive income tax represents one of the largest shares of federal revenue. That is the end of video 1D on tax rate structures. Thanks for watching. All right, time for Janet Hex. Uh, how young and restless are you right now over the anticipated tax cut to come? Now, the president is very excited to tell Americans that you can fit it pretty much on a card like this, the entire thing. Now, now my point on this is that, well, it's wonderful if you can get a long card, but if you don't see an improved net, in other words, if you're not taking home more money and a lot more money, or at least something that you could notice is a lot more money, the, the, the simplicity matter. Let's go to attorney Christy Gunzig, internet, uh, Gunzig, I should say. We have internet radio sensation, Michael Gunzelman, Your World Audio Man, Dion Baia, and Miss America 2008, Kirsten Haglin. All right, so to you first, Guns, on this. What do you want, simplicity or money? Uh, well, of course, in the end, it comes down to money. And I think for millennials, especially those that might not have that much money, literally that's what we want is the tax cut. But also, this is such, it's such a gimmick, and it kind of shows just how much the GOP, GOP is like in disarray, thinking like, oh, we'll put it on a postcard. That'll win them over. But in the end, I mean, Maybe we're Maybe they just think you're stupid. Yeah, but who, well, who, we're going to get screwed either way. <laughs> like, in the end, we're screwed. So let's be honest. So you're not optimistic that the simplicity is going to help you, just, or get, you're going to get No, it just shows that McConnell okay. and uh, Paul Ryan are clueless on what matters. Who who cares about simplicity? I mean, I don't care if I can mail it away. If I'm worried about filling out a long form, I pay. A, uh, I have an accountant. Yeah. So right. I, if, if I'm going to get more, you money, have an accountant. Yeah. So and if I'm going to get more money back, done. I'd rather pay somebody to do it so I can get the most money back. It doesn't matter to me if I can fill it on a postcard and send it away, I and I'm not getting anything back. All I right. totally agree. Also, Thank a you. lot of millennials. You're welcome. A lot of millennials and Gen Xers are actually entrepreneurs yeah. and small business owners, and so have to hire CPAs. I am a small business owner, and I hire a CPA to do mine. Ha. But also, really? that postcard. Yes, that postcard is not simple. There's a lot of math involved in that. Yeah. There's a lot of work worksheets that it directs really? you to. Yeah, but it do, says go find it. Find it on this worksheet. And whoever has gone into a it's government like, website, in other words, you would know if you've got more money coming. Well, right? And doesn't that defeat the point of a postcard if you have like all these backup worksheets that you need to fill out and do math on anyway? Yes. That way you can figure out what to put on the it's postcard. It's like when you take a test in school simple? and you yes. think it's going to be all right. And then you suddenly you turn to the last page and there's five essay questions. <laughs> yeah. that need to be six <laughs> paragraphs totally. each. Oh, yeah. I thought I was done. So bottom line, you have your doubts. Unless you see more net you're, you're going to have the it. money, baby. Yeah, Show me the money, money baby. Well for living, like a uh, credit for living in New York City. I mean, the oh, most okay, calm down. Yeah. Maybe the work. Yeah, all right. I'm sorry. 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 I'm sorry